steps to solve all circular motion problems now what are the steps that's pretty simple actually uh, i'll just uh, write down the steps and with that uh, i would like to take an example so that you are uh, actually uh, able to understand that how are we going to apply these steps okay so the step one is let us say we are talking about a conical pendulum the example that i am taking is a conical pendulum now what is a conical pendulum in the first place there is a simple pendulum uh, and a conical pendulum now what is a conical pendulum so basically let us say uh, if i have this mass okay if i have this mass which is hanging here okay and if i uh, pull it in uh, aside and then i leave it so this type of pendulum is known as simple pendulum okay you may be knowing it uh, even if you don't uh, we'll be studying this in uh, simple harmony motion so this kind of a motion is known as simple pendulum but now if i actually take it aside at some angle theta with the vertical and in spite of just releasing it i give it such a velocity so that it actually starts moving on a circular path in a horizontal plane if you uh, if you note this is actually moving in a at in a particular horizontal plane with a constant speed okay and this path is actually known this is known as conic, uh, conical pendulum okay so this is conical pendulum and this is what is this this is simple pendulum so we are not studying simple pendulum right now we are actually going to study conical pendulum and the question is that that if the length of the pendulum is l the angle that it makes with the vertical is theta then what velocity should be given so that it keeps moving on a circular path okay so this is what is conical pendulum uh, i'll just draw a diagram the diagram says that this is if this is the ceiling and uh, this is the vertical let us say the pendulum is here the length is l and this angle is theta okay obviously it is going to follow this path okay it is going to follow this path uh, actually not that beautiful path so it is going to follow this particular path now the first step step 1 step 1 is identify the plane of circular motion and calculate the radius okay so identify the plane of circular motion and calculate the radius so the so in this case the plane of circular motion is horizontal and the radius is actually equal to l sin theta this is the radius and this radius is actually given by l sin theta okay identify the plane of circular motion and calculate the radius this is the first step second step is uh draw the fbd draw the free body diagram okay so if if i draw the free body diagram of this particle let us say its mass is m so i can say if this is m there is a force downwards which is mg and there is a force tension which is t this angle is theta okay what else what, which any uh, uh, is there any other force that uh, that i should write? sorry is there any other force uh, which should be written here so tension is this mg is this and centrifugal force mv square by r where should i write the mv square by r leftwards or rightwards there is no such force as mv square by r listen to it i'll i'll, I'll just uh, uh, tell you once more what i am trying to uh, write down in the free body diagram is all the real forces tension friction normal spring gravity these are the real forces which are acting 
and if you talk about later then it may be electrostatic force electromagnetic force magnetic uh, magnetic force they can be there but there is no, no force called centripetal force what does that mean centripetal force means force which is acting towards center and in this case which is the force which is acting towards center the component of tension which is acting towards center that's it which is the centripetal force in this case t sin theta okay so the point is if i am talking about tension and mg so this is this is the complete free body diagram so the second step is draw the free body diagram here it is the third step resolve forces only and always very very important only in always only and always in the following directions the first is perpendicular to plane of circular motion and second is radial direction actually there is third one also tangential direction so there are three uh, 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 directions in which the forces are to be resolved so in this case there is mg here this is the radial direction this is the direction perpendicular to the radius and the tangential direction is going to be perpendicular to the board so if tension is there so i can say the forces are if uh, if i again draw the block uh, or the particle then there is a force upwards that is t cos theta there is a force downwards that is mg there is a force towards the right that is t sin theta and there is no other force now there is no tangential there is no tangential force that what does that mean that if the tangential force is absent that means that the tangential acceleration is zero and if tangential acceleration is zero what does that mean that the uh, if the tangential acceleration is zero that simply means that there is uh, the, uh, this uh, circular motion is uniform okay non uniform circular motion will be discussing a bit later okay so uh, this is uh, what is this so we have uh, broken the forces in the directions in which we want it this is the third step the fourth step is simple is that as that now as you see if the particle is moving on a horizontal plane let us say if there is an ant okay or an insect which is actually crawling on the ground in circles and in whatever in whatever path so what is its vertical acceleration it is zero because if a particle is moving in a particular plane then the acceleration in the vert in the uh, in the along the line perpendicular to that plane is zero if a particle is moving on a on a particular plane then its acceleration in this direction is zero okay because there is no motion in this direction so that's why if if this particle is moving in this plane this plane and you have drawn uh, and you have found the force in the vertical direction so that what should that force net force should be it should be zero so the fourth point is uh, the first part of fourth point is that uh, sigma sigma f perpendicular equal to zero sigma f perpendicular sigma means summation so the net force in the perpendicular direction should be equal to zero so in this case what would i write in this case i would write that t cos theta is equal to mg t cos theta is equal to mg uh, what about the radial direction so i can simply say that if a particle is moving on a circular path the acceleration inverse acceleration is given by v square by r okay so and if the in inverse acceleration is given by v square by r that means the inverse radial force net radial inverse force must be equal to mv square by r so that means summation of f radial is equal to mv square by r taking inwards as positive that is the second part third is if tangential uh, in this case i can i can write down here only if tangential direction if at is zero 
if uh, in the tangential direction if force sig if sigma ft is zero this means uniform circular motion and if sigma ft is not equal to zero this this means non uniform circular motion uniform circular motion non uniform circular motion the, uh, this type of questions would appear here this type of questions would appear actually this is something that would appear after we study work energy theorem okay so this this was the uh, fourth step and the fifth step is once you get all the equations okay now uh, let me just apply this step in this question so uh, what is the radial force there, there is only one radial force and that is t sin theta so that t sin theta should be equal to mv square by r and what is the radius radius is given by l sin theta that we can use later on and the fifth step is simplify if you just use these five steps you are definitely going to uh, get the equations which are required to solve the complete question for example here i have already got t cos theta equal to mg and t sin theta equal to mv square by r what did we need we needed how much velocity should be given so that it, uh, this moves on a circular motion that means how much velocity should be given so that it follows a uh, uh, a conical pendulum now all we need to find out is the velocity here now we have two variables one is theta sorry theta is there uh, one is t and another is v so what i do is i simply divide them the moment i divide them what do i get the mass actually gets cancelled with mass and tension gets cancelled with tension so what do we get we get v square by r is equal to g tan theta so the velocity comes out to be root over r g tan theta okay so the velocity with which the particle should be projected in the horizontal direction so that move so that it covers a conical pendulum that velocity is given by root over r g tan theta not more than that not less than that but exactly if you give a velocity of root r g tan theta in that case the particle will follow a circular path uh, and it, of course uh, the value of r is actually l sin theta so if you want you can put the value of r as l sin theta here okay so just write down these equations and try and practice this thing by yourself keep on writing uh, keep on reading the equations and try and practice this uh, draw the fbd by yourself uh, draw the components by yourself then the next thing is that the net force in the perpendicular direction must be zero net force in the uh, radially inward direction should be equal to mv square by r and just solve those two equations okay so just so, uh, try and solve this okay so let us take one more example and uh, solve that using these steps and that is one of the uh, one of the uh, most complicated examples and that is banking of roads now what is banking of roads i don't know whether you have observed or not that when you are moving on highways in that case usually the roads are quite slant that means if if you, uh, if this is your car if it has to go straight then the, car, the then the road is flat but if you have to turn like this in that case the road is uh, is slightly slant so that it actually provides a normal and that normal actually provides your centripetal force so that your car does not skid uh, the and the required friction is uh, uh, sufficient and the uh, and the uh, available friction is sufficient for the car to negotiate the turn so basically what we are talking about is the banking of roads banking of roads obviously doesn't mean a bank which is uh, which is uh, on the road side no it banking of roads means that the road is slightly tilted for your car to move uh, along it easily now if i just try and draw the diagram the diagram would be something like i'm just drawing a little bit uh, what what should i say the angle is not very small usually the uh, the banking angles are like 3 degree 4 degree 5 degree 6 degree but uh, in this example i am going to take it as a large angle so that you can understand that what is happening okay so let us say that this is a a uh, death well have you seen a death well a death well uh, in uh, in usually in fairs there are death wells in death wells they, uh, what do they do is that there are almost vertical walls and uh, people can can stand on the uh, upper circumference like here they can stand here and they, uh, and there are uh, people who are driving motorcycles or even maruti cars uh, inside this death well 
so this is uh, what uh, usually happens now the question is what is the science behind it basically death well is just an exaggeration of banking of roads only okay now let me uh, let me try and explain what is happening is that let us say that there is a car which is uh, coming in this direction okay so there is a car which is moving like this and the circular path that is it is going to cover is like this okay let us say that this angle is theta and uh, the distance from this end is let's say uh, r or uh, d the distance is d this is theta okay now the question is if there is no friction please note i am i'm i'm uh, i'm solving the case in which uh, friction is zero and all the all the walls are smooth so in that case what should be the velocity of the car so that it does not slip down or up okay and it is able to rotate or follow just this circular path so question is find the velocity of the car so that it is able to move on this circular path with a with a uniform speed okay and uh, if you want you can try the question you already have written all the steps just go on reading the steps and go on with this one and uh, if you if you are actually genuinely trying them then just pause here which i strongly recommend you should pause here and uh, try and solve the questions so pause here and now if you are uh, not you, you are watching the video that that means i have assumed that you have already i am assuming that you have already uh, attempted this still i would uh, now now i would like to solve this what is the first step let 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 me talk uh, with the along with the steps so what is the first step first step is try and identify identify the plane of circular motion so the plane of circular motion is horizontal okay the plane of circular motion is horizontal second and calculate the radius now what is the radius or uh, not let us say this this was l whatever the radius is let us say the radius comes out to be r actually it would come out to be l plus d cos theta okay l plus d cos theta so i'll just write r is equal to l plus d cos theta anyways we'll be using as it is r in the uh, questions coming second is draw the free body diagram now when i am drawing the free body diagram of the car so what do i find what i find is that this is the car and uh, what are the forces the forces acting are there is one mg downwards the normal is acting perpendicular to the surface and uh, any other force friction is absent so uh, friction is absent as i told you if there is no friction then there is a, these are the only two forces there is no centripetal force or centri centripetal force or centrifugal force centripetal force means force towards center centrifugal force means uh, force away from center but actually no, the component of normal is the centripetal force it it is the force which is acting towards the center anyways the real forces are normal and mg only there are only two forces mg and normal now we resolve the forces in the in the three directions first is perpendicular to the plane of circular motion second is in the radial direction and third is in the tangential direction so as you can see there is no tangential direction force uh, there is no force in the tangential direction that means that we are talking about no tangential acceleration and that means we are talking about uniform circular motion okay now if we if i resolve this force in vertical and horizontal uh, that means in uh, direction perpendicular to the plane so uh, if this angle is theta so uh, let me just talk about theta so if this angle is theta then this angle is uh, this angle is 90 minus theta so this is also 90 minus theta and that means this is theta so this line makes an angle theta this is pure geometry this is theta so this is 90 minus theta this is 90 minus theta so this is vertically opposite angle again 90 minus theta and if this is 90 minus theta that means this angle is theta now if this is theta here this is normal here and this is mg downwards so i can say the component in the vertical direction comes out to be n cos theta and the component in the horizontal direction comes out to be n sin theta actually i shouldn't use the words vertical and horizontal actually it is component in the direction perpendicular to the plane is n cos theta 
and component in that radial direction is n sin theta. Now comes the next step. In the next step, we say that net force in the perpendicular direction, perpendicular to the plane, this net force should be equal to 0. So that brings us to the conclusion that m cos theta should be equal to mg. Secondly, the radial, net radial force that is n sin theta should be equal to this should be equal to mv square by r, right? So this becomes mv square by r. If the speed is v, then it becomes mv square by r. Now I don't really need the normal, I just need velocity. I have two equations, so what do I do? I divide them. Mass gets cancelled with mass, normal gets cancelled with normal, and velocity again comes out to be root r g tan theta. So this is the velocity which is required uh, for the car to move on a circular path in the absence of friction okay now if at this velocity if it is moving even in the absence of friction even if friction was there in that case what would have happened even if friction was there then as there was no requirement of friction that means the friction force still would have been zero so actually they call this velocity by different names not different names but by different methods first is what should be the velocity for the car to move on a circular path if there is no friction? That is the, what we used just now. Second, uh, the, the next way of uh, calling this is what should be the velocity so that the car uh, undergoes minimum wear and tear? Now, what is minimum wear and tear? Basically, whenever friction happens, uh, whenever friction, uh, friction acts, in that case, the rubber tires, they start uh, deteriorating. Okay, so they, they, uh, they, uh, they don't last long if there, are, uh, if there are large amounts of friction. And they, they undergo wear and tear. Okay, so if they say that there should be no wear and tear, that means they want uh, a situation in which there is no friction acting. And that means they want this velocity. So if there is no wear and tear, or if there was no friction, or the one more way is the, the road is banked according to what velocity? That is another question. The road is banked according to what velocity? So by that, they, what they mean to say is find out this velocity so that uh, at this velocity there will be no wear and tear. Okay. So this velocity is given by root rg tan theta. And uh, once you, uh, uh, I hope you were able to write out, uh, find out this equation yourself. If not, in that case, now step, uh, follow all these steps and reach to this conclusion. Then I will then uh, just introduce a little bit of friction also here. Uh, let's take it a notch higher. But before that, just write, write this down. Okay. So now let's, uh, let's uh, solve one more question. The next question is, let us say that if friction was not zero in this case. Okay. Now if friction was not zero, actually if friction was zero, and if the uh, body was, if the car was moving with exactly this velocity, then it was moving on this circle. Now, what do you think? If it started moving at a higher velocity, then it would go out or in? It would go out. Okay. And if it starts moving slowly, then it would actually slip inside. But please note that slipping would be kinetic friction. Why? Because that slipping would be sideways. So, so, the, uh, so the tires of a car, they can roll like this. They cannot roll like sideways. Okay, so if the car is standing like this and if you push it here or, it push you, or you push it here, in that case, the tires will actually uh, skid. They will not roll. And that means that the friction involved is kinetic friction. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, that, that means that the friction involved is static friction. Sorry, earlier also I said kinetic friction. So if the car is being pushed sideways, that means the friction involved would be kinetic friction. And uh, to, uh, in order to avoid that, now we are done, then we'll be talking about static friction. So let us solve this question. The question is, uh, if the coefficient of friction is mu, find the range of velocities for which the car can move on this circular path. Now this is quite a difficult question. Uh, but still, uh, after knowing all these steps, I hope you will be able to solve it. So what do we want? First of all, uh, if this is the exact velocity, then no friction is required. If the velocity is greater than this, then, then the friction required would be downwards. 
and as the velocity keeps on increasing in that case the its tendency to slip outwards increases so the requirement of friction increases and what is the maximum value of friction that is mu into normal that is the maximum value of friction so i would say that if i am talking about the maximum velocity in that case friction is acting downwards at its maximum value and it is just about to slip outwards okay so if the velocity is maximum in that case what would the free body diagram say actually what would it, uh, what would it say is i can change a little bit here only the normal is there uh, n sin theta n sin theta is there and the friction would be acting in that case in this direction and that if it is just about to slip that means the friction would be equal to mu into normal okay now if i am talking about angles if this is theta this is 90 minus theta so this is theta and if this angle is theta that means the horizontal component of friction would actually come out to be this is mu n cos theta and this is mu n sin theta so there are two forces downwards mu n sin theta and mg there are two uh, there is one force upwards that is n cos theta and there are two forces sideways uh, sideways that is n sin theta and mu n cos theta okay now if i try and find out uh, write down the equations so what can i say if i am talking about the uh, uh, vertical case so all the forces which are perpendicular to the plane of motion the net force perpendicular to the plane of motion must be equal to zero so one equation that comes out is given by n cos theta is equal to in <coughs> fact i can say minus mu n sin theta is equal to mg actually n cos theta is equal to mu n sin theta plus mg so i have just taken the mu n sin theta on the left hand, left hand side what about the horizontal force so horizontal force i can say mu n cos theta plus n sin theta so n sin theta plus mu n cos theta is equal to mv square by r mv max square by r okay so when uh, what did i do if i am saying that the that the uh, car is moving with the maximum velocity so that it just about to slip outwards so if it is just, uh, just about to slip outwards that means that the force of friction is acting downwards and it is acting at its maximum available value now what is the maximum available value of friction that is limiting friction so the limiting friction is given by mu into normal so i just added this mu n also here in the free body diagram uh, i resolved all the forces in uh, in the uh, in three directions first was the direction perpendicular to the plane of motion second radial direction and third tangential direction although there was no force in the tangential direction now once the components are there net force in the perpendicular direction is zero so this is what it is and net force in the radially inward direction is mv square by r now all i do is i just divide these two the moment i divide all these normals actually get cancelled the mass gets cancelled and what do we get we get maximum velocity by uh, square upon r is equal to r uh, maximum velocity square upon r g is equal to sin theta plus mu cos theta upon cos theta minus mu sin theta i can just remove rg from here and multiply it here and if i remove root uh, square so this comes this this is the maximum velocity that can take place now can you solve about the minimum velocity what would be the difference for in the case of minimum velocity so if the velocity is minimum uh, if the velocity again comes out to uh, v equal to root rg tan theta that means that in that case the friction requirement would be zero but if the velocity is less than this then it would uh, try to skid downwards and to stop it friction would act upwards if the velocity is still decreased the friction would act uh, would act uh, more strongly upwards in order to stop it but there would be one time when we will keep keep on decreasing the velocity there will be one time when when the friction will not be able to hold this car in the same place uh, height wise okay 
and that would be the case i am just uh, going to discuss the case in which it is just about to slip downwards that means friction must be acting at its maximum possible value upwards so uh, what is the change in the free body diagram here so if this is the car then uh, there is this force mg the friction is acting upwards and it is equal to mu n because it is just about to slip and the normal is here the normal makes an angle theta with the vertical and friction makes an angle theta with the horizontal the there are many people when they see this they start uh, resolving forces in this and this direction that is wrong as i told you in the in this uh, in the problem in the rules and uh, the in the steps it was clearly written that you have to resolve forces only and always in the in the following directions which are the directions they are one one is the uh, it's a plane perpendicular to the circular motion second is radial and third, third is tangential direction so here also as the plane is horizontal so we take uh, the components in these directions only now at the moment i write this if i break this this becomes n sin theta and upward becomes n cos theta if i break mu n the mu n here becomes mu n cos theta and the upward component becomes mu n sin theta and there is mg downwards so what are the forces that are acting so forces that are acting in the vertical direction must be zero so in that case what i can say is mu uh, sorry n cos theta plus mu n sin theta must be equal to mg this is one thing and net force in the radial direction radially inwards net force should be equal to zero oh sorry should be equal to mg square by r so that makes n sin theta minus mu n cos theta is equal to mv minimum square by r the moment i divide these two m and m gets cancelled all the normals get cancelled and the value of v minimum actually comes out to be root over rg into sin theta minus mu cos theta upon cos theta plus mu sin theta these are not like formula to remember i have just <coughs> calculated and found the maximum and minimum values these things are not that important the more important thing is whether you can write these equations by yourself or not and whether you can draw these free body diagrams by yourself or not okay so this is the range of velocity this is the maximum velocity and this is the minimum velocity these are this is the range of velocities for which the particle will keep moving on the same circular path in presence of friction now if mu is zero in that case uh, both of them actually if you if you uh, look at uh, look at them closely if i put mu equal to zero in both of them both of them actually comes out to be uh, come out to be root rg tan theta so if the friction is not there then there is only one velocity that is root rg tan theta for which the particle will will move on a same uh, circular path okay so just uh, try and write down the whole part